In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the Stage Configuration menu to set up your virtual production environment within SceneForge. To get started, all you have to do is open up the Stage Config menu available within the Visuals tab on the left side menu. Within this menu, you'll see two main tabs, one for configuring the volume itself as well as your stage, and the other for content to be projected onto that stage. The first thing you'll see is the set width and length options. These simply indicate the width and length of this rectangle, indicating the bounds of your set. If I set this to 75 by 60, for example, you can see it update accordingly. This is also visible in the floor plan system, like so. Now below that, you'll see the stage preset option. This is what controls all these sliders below. By default, it is set to off, but you can change it to either a custom or any of the four view stages available within the US. And you can see that as I switch between them, you'll see we get a big volume representation according to the preset at this location for Vegas, Tampa, Orlando, and Nashville. Of course, you can also set it to custom and be able to adjust any of these parameters in real time using feet as the main unit of measure with all of these options. It's worth noting that these volumes are as accurate as we can make them, but they're not sub-millimeter accurate. That being said, they are perfect for pre-visualization and experimenting and simulating your set within SceneForge. Now to go over these options, the first is the curved diameter which is the actual diameter in feet that the invisible circle, essentially, will take up. So for example, I can set this to 70 feet, and you'll see if I use the tape measure tool around the center point, it is almost exactly 70 feet. You can also specify the curve arc, which is the curve radius or diameter around the specified diameter over here. It can go from 10 degrees to 270 degrees. Of course, you can also choose the height of the volume, as well as an optional tail length to create these J shapes that you see in some of the available stages. You can also specify a curve spacing, which is the distance between these two corners to have a more rounded rectangle shape as in the Orlando stage. So you can see as I increase this, we get some subtle spacing between the corners. Just like the tail length, this is optional. And once you have your volume you're happy with, in this case I'm going to go to the Tampa preset, we can go to the Content tab. Here we can actually project content using NDI onto this volume. The first option is the content fit, which allows you to specify to fit the width or the height of the volume. Then we can choose an NDI source, specify an offset, and then have a couple other options for showing the camera frustum as well as following the camera. Before I show off how you can use content, it's worth noting that the camera frustum toggle can be used regardless of what volume preset you have. So when I enable it, we get a three-dimensional representation of the camera's frustum, essentially the same as what's available in the floor plan, just in 3D. This is visible in whatever active camera is currently selected. Now to show off some content, we can first make sure to refresh our NDI sources. And using the NDI test patterns app I have running in the background, I can simply click on the test patterns. It'll take a second to load in. And now we have our image of the baseball field visible on our volume. But of course, we only see the top of the image because it's set to fit width. So we can specify the content offset to change the Y position of the texture. So for some things, maybe like this, it makes sense to fit the whole width or lower down where you see the baseball field. But in many other cases, you want to be able to see the entire texture all in one place. So what we can do is change from fit width 
to fit height. And now regardless of the height of the volume, the content will always fit the height, and the content offset slider adjusts the X position of that texture. You can see the frustum changing because the center point of the camera's frustum will always be whatever content is visible on the volume. Now there's one last option you can use, and that is follow camera. This is ideal for the fit height option. This means that regardless of what we set over here, as I move my active camera around and rotate it on the y-axis, you'll see the content will always follow the camera. So you can see if I go into shoot mode, this is ideal for situations in which I have a subject that should remain in focus, with a background that should remain always visible as I move the camera. So you can get this very interesting parallax effect between our 3D objects and our two-dimensional background. You'll also notice that there is a light emitting from this backdrop, and that is useful for when you are working in lower light environments. It'll try to approximate the most vivid color in that scene and emit sunlight, so if you have objects in front of it, you'll actually get some cast of that light. Additionally, it sets the rest of the volume to a subtle version of that color. So if you have indirect intensity on, you can see we get some light global illumination emitting from the volume. And that is an overview of the stage previous functionality currently available in Sceneforge. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.